Welcome back. As usual, the presentation tier will cover the most common signs and symptoms for each disease. These are only a quick refresher to allow repetition of high yield clinical presentations. For Campylobacter, which disease will show symmetric paralysis that begin with the legs and work its way up? This is Guillain-Barre syndrome. This syndrome is seen in certain GI and respiratory infections. We didn't specifically cover this detail in the last video, but which disease is associated with urethritis, enthesopathy, and conjunctivitis? This is the classic triad for reactive arthritis. It's also important on tests to remember this falls into the category of hemorrhagic or bloody diarrhea. So what is another name for this? There's a much greater variety in clinical presentations, but for testing, hemorrhagic gastritis could be used to describe this bug. We know the main symptoms of diseases of H. pylori now, but do you know the prevalence of each? Which is the most common cancer from H. pylori? Adenocarcinoma can be found in the stomach and intestines of people with chronic diseases from H. pylori origin, such as ulcers. What location of ulcer formation is most likely to show H. pylori on testing? This goes against the first impression, but the duodenal ulcer has a higher prevalence of positive H. pylori on testing. Also, due to the stomach's ability to handle acidic environments naturally, it may be able to fend off an ulcer longer than it, the duodenum, though it will succumb to prolonged decreases in pH. Lastly, which location of ulcer is the most likely to become malignant? Some studies have shown potential connections of H. pylori in many cancers, but there's been relatively low strength and just as many contradictory studies done. Gastric adenocarcinoma, especially of the antrum, is the most common malignancy associated with H. pylori infection. For Vibrio, we had three species in this genus to consider. Most of us are aware of what cholera is and does, so let's add some gunner questions. Which of the three species discussed is associated with oysters? V. vulnificus can cause cellulitis. It is often seen in the hands of those that handle oysters regularly, such as oyster farmers. What if someone came in stating they recently drank from an untreated water source and displayed skin tinting from dehydration? The dehydration should be a dead giveaway for cholera. Skin tinting occurs when the elasticity of pulled skin is decreased. This is often seen in vomiting, diarrhea, and febrile illnesses. Next, we see a patient with abdominal cramping and GI manifestations. On further questioning, they state they recently ate at an all-you-can-eat sushi joint. This presentation is most closely related to V. parahemolyticus. It doesn't display the severe GI symptoms seen in cholera and is more commonly seen in fish-related gastritis. Legionella infections often go undiagnosed unless severe sequelae are noticed. Remember that only certain populations usually display these more serious forms of disease states. Which Legionella causing disease is most associated with flu-like symptoms without severe lung complications? It is also noticed in healthy individuals. Pontiac fever is a less common disease to be familiar with for Legionella, but as we can see here, the question specifically states healthy individuals, which can be an important clue in differentiating disease states. We will see in Tier 3 how to detect this bug versus other microbes. The more severe presenting signs and symptoms of this disease are often seen in elderly patients and can cause pneumonia. This one, of course, is the infamous Legionnaires disease. It is also seen in younger patients that have HIV, AIDS, cancer, or other immunocompromised cofactors. Here's an easy one for you. We don't even need to read the patient's presentation as a disease name is again in the species name. Notice here we use bone-breaking cough instead of the whooping cough terminology. Test writers will often get nearly, and annoyingly, poetic with their varied descriptions of diseases to avoid buzzwords. This disease can not only induce vomiting from severe coughing, but also conjunctival hemorrhages and pneumothorax. The Haemophilus genus covers a wide variety of species. For medical microbes, the encapsulated type are more virulent and require physician knowledge about the presentations of these infections. To start with, genital ulcers can look very similar, so knowing how to differentiate can save the patient and us time, money, and pain. What was the specific name 
of the painful lesion seen in haemophilus disease. Unlike the syphilitic chancre, the chancroid, or chancre-like lesion, is very painful. H. ducreae can cause ulcerations in other areas as well, but is most known for its genital ulcer disease. It is mainly differentiated by clinical presentation. If a young patient is brought to the office by their parents with a red, swollen throat, is drooling, and leaning forward when sitting, what anatomical zone is most likely inflamed? Epiglottitis can be so severe that patients refuse or are unable to swallow. This causes them to hypersalivate and drool. It is common to intubate a patient prophylactically to prevent the airway from becoming compromised. Lastly, for this video, we have Pseudomonas, the outcast. It doesn't fit with the curved rods or respiratory rod categories, but can cause some overlapping diseases and presentations. Let's take a patient with a history of mechanical ventilation, shortness of breath, and decreased oxygen saturation. Pseudo is a common concern for VAP due to being multi-drug resistant and the potential for co-infections, treatment regimens for VAP must be broad-ranged while also specifically targeting P. arginosa and MRSA. The next presentation is of urinary frequency and urgency. Of course, this is the typical presentation for a UTI. As pseudo is found in the skin and in water, as well as other common environments, it can easily be transferred to the urogenital tract. That is also the reason behind the next patient's signs of inflamed and vesicular hair follicles. What is the term for an inflamed follicle? Remember, just add itis to the end of any word and you have an inflammatory state. The last concerning visual sign is rare but severe. In a hospital bed, you notice a patient has developed necrotic pustules and vesicular lesions. You haven't yet been able to diagnose their disease. What's the name for this skin presentation if your labs for P. arginosa come back positive? Ecthyma gangrenosum is a nearly pathognomonic skin lesion seen in pseudo-associated septicemia. Whew, say that three times fast. It is more likely to be associated with immunocompromised states and has a high mortality rate. Picking out this lesion from other similar skin presentations early can provide quick treatment and increase prognosis for survival. Hopefully this video has provided you with some useful information on the similarities and differences of some of the disease states presented here, as well as in previous modules. As we continue forward, we'll begin to cover many more microbes that have many similar presentations. There are dozens of causes for gastritis and pneumonia. Trying to take note of manners in which to separate these presentations by pathogen will lead to better treatment protocols. In the next tier for this module, we'll cover the laboratory tests important in the diagnosis of these gram-negative bacilli. Are you an educator or a student with an interest in creating educational content? Would you like some tips and tricks to improve on the educational material you're working on? Please contact us via the website contact form or social media to inquire about free instructional design advice. We're also open to discussing hosting your material and working together to build a platform for the future of medical education.